Hi, John Ason, Director of Instruction down here at 3D Golf Performance. And I want to discuss with you today um, a basic concept that has really been in most of my videos uh, over the years, and you've probably seen before. But there's so much talk now about um, controlling your miss. And we all know that the best players in the world talk about the fact that they only hit really two, maybe four perfect shots, what they would describe as their ideal conditions and executing it perfectly on the golf course. Now again, this is under tournament conditions. When we're at the driving range, what we want to do and understand is how do we avoid big misses? And one of the key things that I see when I go out and play with students and or watch them hit balls is a concept that I grew up with as well, and that is trying to hit the ball straight by setting up with what we call sort of a railroad track system where all your body lines are set up parallel to your target line. I've represented the target line by this orange stick and these white alignment sticks are obviously parallel to that orange stick headed towards my barber pole, my target zone out there. So I've got my little station set up here and the problem with this concept is if I make the most perfect arc, a swing arc where the path would literally be straight going through impact with very little in to out or out to in path but relatively straight then my face has to be perfect to hit it online. In other words it has to be dead square. So in golf things happen fast. There's nervous twitches that occur. There's all kinds of things, timing, etc., rhythm, the lies that we have that create different situations where we want to try to actually eliminate the big miss and really focus on how you're going to get a good miss to the target. And I've got just a short iron here, an 8 iron, and in general it's going to be a lot easier to control, but I'm going to try to swing my path straight and we'll see how my face condition may turn the ball in either direction. So this is the straightest path I can swing and then I want the face to be straight as well. So as I look at that shot it started straight up the line and it curved to the left. So let's look at our data here. Alright, so I got a club face that's five degrees inside out and I've got a club path that's closed two degrees. So the alignments weren't great, but the fact is is that even if I had swung the club straight, I've got a club face that's already pointing left, which is going to make the ball curve more left. This gets more magnified with the driver, which I think we all would agree would be you know, in, in terms of your entire game, those are where the biggest misses happen is with the driver, which I'm going to illustrate in a minute. So I'm going to try to fix that path a little bit more here to get it more straight and have the face a little bit more straight. Oh, for goodness sakes, now I'm to the right. So let's look at the data on that particular shot and see where things ended up. Okay, so now I've got a very straight club face, 0.8. Am I, sorry, a, a 0.8 path with a club face that's 3.1 open. The ball had slice spin of 318, went well to the right of my target zone. And my numbers were pretty good. Zeroed out on my path, my face was 3 degrees to the right. The ball started right and went more right. So to control that a little bit more, I want you to get rid of this concept, at least until you have a much better feel for and a consistent path and face relationship going through the ball. So I'm okay with the target line being where it is, that's fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to aim my body lines a little bit to the right. I'm going to get you to understand that my path 
is going to be the furthest to the right out here. And that should be fairly parallel to my body lines. And then these lines in here represent my club face alignment when I hit the ball. So the club face alignment is obviously going to be left of the path that the club is traveling on. And if that is the case, it will always be starting to the right and curving in towards the target. So in my mind, that would be a good shot. And the bigger the club, the more important it is to control your misses with power. And therefore, if I hit a driver like this, then I should always hit that drawing ball flight with pretty good control. So I'm going to try it with the 8-iron here. So again, I've got my body lines a little bit right of my intended target. And I've got my club face that's going to release left of my intended target. Okay, so I've got myself a nine degree path to the right and a seven degree face to the right, and I still hit my target zone. I can do a little bit better than that. And that one right over my target, it actually ended up a hair left with a little bit more rotation of the club face. So nine degrees inside out, one degree open, almost hit dead center of my target. Now you can vary these things, these alignments. Obviously with an eight iron, I might not want to aim as far to the right or swing as far to the right because of the loft and the power I'm hitting it with. But with my driver, instantly I'm thinking that I'm going to have a draw shot here and a much bigger target zone to hit the ball into. So I'm going to exaggerate a little bit more and again I've got that stick out there for my path. There goes my driver up the right side drawing back into the center and I can start to picture that shot based on this graphic here that shows me that my club face to path relationship is basically two to one. I've got a 4.9 open face, so the ball started to the right, but I've got an 8.9 path to the right. So my face is four degrees close to my path, which put this side spin of 428 RPM and that was all going back towards my target because it created the spin from the face being close to the path. So this concept really isn't that difficult to practice. You just need to believe in it. And the fact is, is you're going to hit a few shots to the right. You might even hit a few to the left. But you've got to get this stuff under control so that you get rid of the big misses that cause you a whole bunch of troubles when you play. and and. This way, if you, if you have a face variation, it's no problem if you're under this concept because the face can be slightly closed to the path to a lot close to the path in, in terms of those numbers. If I'm 8 degrees inside out, I can have anywhere from 7 degrees open club face to a half a degree open. When it starts to get too close, then it might curve a bit left. But you've got a lot of face variation for you to practice with there. Whereas if you have the other concept, hitting it straight with everything lining up square at impact, that's going to be a challenge, particularly with the big guy. So try this concept. Good luck with it. And remember, enjoy that hit.